What's up guys, this is Tinez from PB Nation here at Boston Paintball. I'm a Boston Bloodline, committed paintball. I was here for Wednesday night drill nights. Met up with T2, the mad scientist. He wanted to see what this new gun was all about, the GSL. So uh, stay tuned for some reviews, efficiency tests, and that oh so popular shooting video that all you little aglets have been requesting on the nation. Thanks. Hey everybody out there, uh, T2 here with Committed Paintball and Boston Paintball. I uh, haven't done a review in a little while, but uh, I've been very busy with holiday, you know, holiday sales and the Twister project and stuff like that. Uh, today we have something very special for you guys. This is actually a first, I believe. Um, it is a video for Planet Eclipse's new, well, let's show you. Planet Eclipse's new gun, very limited numbers. This is the GSL by Planet Eclipse, which is the SL version of their Geo platform. Uh, not released yet. These are not going to be launching until after the first of the year and shipping. Uh, this is a pre-production model. Uh, our good friend Tom, who plays on New England Pride, uh, who is local to the area, let us uh, take a look at this gun before it got shipped off for a proper review from people. But we're going to give you kind of a half-ass review, I guess. Uh, so this is GSL number... Five, if you can see that. Absolutely gorgeous gun. Um, Weight-wise, fairly similar to the other uh, the other Geos that are out there. We have a 3.1. Uh, we also have a Geo 3 Reaper edition here. Um, for all intents and purposes, though, we'll give you a little walkthrough of this gun to the best of my ability because I've only seen this thing for an hour or so now. So, uh, number one, the first thing you're going to notice, obviously, the back of this bolt assembly is totally different than anything else Planet Eclipse has done yet and the way this bolt comes out is actually very innovative so the way it actually works when the gun is pressurized it is not able to do this but with no pressure in the gun you simply push right up slide right out the whole bolt comes right out of the gun just that easy the bolt is uh, obviously a I wouldn't say a big departure but it is uh, definitely different than your stock geo bolt and we'll give you a little walk through the bolt side by side in a moment but I'm just trying to give you a little breakdown of what we have here so it comes with uh, two different bolts one is a soft touch with a flat face the other is a hard bolt uh, aluminum bolt aluminum fa flat face bolt the bolt pops right back in it's right in the back like that hovers right over that little spot line it up press it down and you're good to go not going anywhere Great design, uh, very, very cool. Some other little features in this that a uh, little bit of upgrade that actually happened with the 3.1s and the LV1s. I had this little wheel right here to their hardline assembly, and I know a lot of you guys hate on this thing, but it's actually really, really cool. Just spin this guy right here. Makes disassembly very, very easy. Much easier than the LV1s, at least. Pops right off. Good to go. Just really great thinking from Planet Eclipse. Always innovating, always you know changing and, and kind of refining the platform from feedback from people. So uh, I know they have a couple of these testers out there. This is number five. I'm not really sure how many are out there. Um, it's probably something that Jack Wood will never tell anybody, but <laughs> the milling on this gun is absolutely gorgeous. I mean, I thought that the twister milling, which is very extensive milling on the LV-1 was insane, but this is just gorgeous 3D milling. It's not super lighted by any stretch of the imagination, but uh, sick. This is not a production color, by the way. I know they have a handful of ones out there. I know that Ben Johnson just posted an all-black one um, yesterday, I believe, or the other day. This is a hunter green with black parts. So the, the launch colors are pure, um, which is all white with white grips. Gorgeous gun. Uh, they also have Viper, which is a black with lime green parts, and Prestige, which is kind of like a takeoff in their gold and brown. So some other things in this gun cosmetically that I thought, thought were rather interesting. There's a little notch cut out up here. Um, it's not like that on the LV1s. And I find that when you're pulling the trigger, it actually gives you a little bit more room so you don't feel as crowded. Um, it's very, very smart the way they did that. You also have your adjustment for your solenoid right on the frame, just like your GO3.1 and GO3. 
is very cool as well. Um, obviously the soft grips, which now come on the 3.1 are also on this. I don't know if they're compatible between the two. I haven't really had that much time to look at them. Um, board boots up, standard, GSL. Nothing too fancy here, not really reinventing the wheel. Frame-wise, do you have a little snatch grip built in? Thought that was very cool, very comfortable, and holding the gun from the back. Definitely has some grip on it. And uh, the last thing cosmetically that I can see on the outside, the Pops 2 is milled down. It's very, very cool. It reminds me kind of the CSLs, the way they had those milled down with the little jewel on the front. This is SL on the front. Very, very neat. So other things you get in the box, obviously you guys really care about the gun. It's very cool, we'll get back to that in a second. So other things you get in the box, and granted, this is a pre-production model, so uh, you're gonna get a lot more goodies in your box when you get it, if you get a GSL. Um, obviously you get your spares. This is just a Geo 3.1 spares. It's essentially the same in terms of a lot of the bolt O-rings and diameter. Get that. Get a couple of, uh, this is a obviously a pre-production, there's a couple different bolt soft tip, tip bolt faces in there. I don't know if you'll get those or not, but those are in there. This is the second bolt, aluminum bolt. If my camera can get that, it's GSL. Very, very neat the way that they milled the inside of this one. If it focuses, maybe I can show you. It doesn't want to focus, it's okay. There will be high resolution pictures on Committed Paintball um, Facebook page, and I'll probably put them up in the PB Nation post as well. So you can see a side by side of these bolts compared to stock bolts as well. So that guy. Also, if you notice, there is a blade trigger in the gun standard, which I'm a huge fan of the blade triggers. It also comes with your standard Planet Clips bump trigger, I guess you could call it. And from the looks of it, it looks like it's the exact same uh, as the. LV1 in terms of mounting and hardware it is pretty much identical very cool also we're huge fans of these e-portal so you can tinker at home this is your USB connector for your gun USB cord for your computer and your e-portal disc comes with this one. Again, I don't know if it's going to come production. I imagine it probably will, knowing that the CSLs did come with them. So, um, Also, this is missing a few backs, but you are going to get a full barrel kit with this gun. So you're going to get three backs and two tips, a 16 and a 14 inch. Um, they are milled uh, a little bit different, at least the ones in here, than the standard ones that you have um, on the Geos right now. So that's the walkthrough, I guess, of the, uh, the whole gun. It's very impressive. Um, it looks great. I can't wait to shoot it. We're going to give you guys, yeah, a shooting video. You're going to get a shooting video. So I know you guys have been asking for it. Now you're going to get it. Um, but first, we'll do some side-by-sides here with some of the other guns. Uh, just one second. All right, guys. Little comparison video now. We have all the new generation um, Geos here. So I have got a Meta Mayhem uh, Boston Paintball Reaper Edition Geo 3. That's a mouthful. I have a Super Blue 3.1 Geo. Fresh, still got the tags on it. Still smells like new shoes. And we have this thing, <laughs> this jalopy. Uh, awesome GSL. So, um, comparison wise, uh, let's just break it down just from cosmetics and length of gun and such. So, you've got uh, the 3.0, uh, the 3. Point, uh, the Geo 3, I should say. Comparison to the GSL. Guns lengthwise look very similar. Obviously with the grips in the front, it's a little bit fatter. With the 3.1, the grips are pretty much identical now looking at them. But obviously most of the changes in this gun are going to be on the inside. So let's give it a little... Take a look at the bolts here. So here is your Geo 3.1 bolt. 
here is your Geo 3 bolt and ta-da, it's your GSL bolt. So, if I can get the camera zoom in a little bit here, I'll show you all three. Alright, so obviously, just looking right here, you can see that volume wise, it's a lot more volume in the can for the uh, the GSL and it screws together as opposed to the other ones that just kind of pop apart from a technical standpoint I'm sure a lot of these details are out there right now one of the numbers that we're throwing out there is that 500 percent more volume of air is retained in the firing can after each shot so air efficiency numbers for this gun are literally through the roof. Um, we will do a shooting video and an efficiency video in a moment. So we'll start with the cans here. So you have your GSL can right here and the Geo, both Geo ones are basically the same so we're just going to use the 3.1s to look at. So the GSL is in my hand right here. So a couple of things that you have to look at. Obviously with the screwing in the bottom it allows you to get a little bit more volume out of it, I believe, where it actually goes into the, the guide. I'm sure that Tom can give us a little bit more information on that in a moment when we start going through it. Also, we noticed there are some tapered edges that they put into these ridges right here into the supports. Um, obviously, that increases a little bit more volume. It also notches down in certain, uh, certain areas as well. Very, very cool. I mean, obviously, the engineering that went into this is extensive and into the next generation geo you're definitely going to see it so that's the cans i'm going to mix all these up gsl bolt over here this is your geo3 this is your gsl Just, I mean, you can definitely see there's more volume in this one right here in the GSLs. Actually, I'll get the hard one so you can take a look at this one. So here's the hard one compared. It's the GSL. Very cool. We'll get into these guys. Again, GSLs in my right hand. The prop shafts are, are definitely different. I mean, you can tell back here in this portion, you've got a lot more volume in this guy. A lot more space, a lot more air. And this whole latching mechanism is a very, very smart design. And with all the new guns that came out at Cup and in, since the recent, uh, in the recent weeks since Cup, I think this is the best in terms of, you know, bolt release and bolt, uh, where the bolt secures into the gun. It's very cool. So, now that we got the bolt portion out of the way, leave all this stuff together. Now we'll look into a little bit of the milling compared to, uh, that's for that one. Thank you. And it goes together just like a standard geo. Right in the back like that. But it does screw together. So it's not gonna be a pain to take it out of the gun. That's one thing with the geos, it kind of sucked. It's trying to take the bolts out of the guns. So they come back, come apart in two pieces. This just makes it so much easier. Very familiar with uh, you know some of the other spools that we have. They come out much easy, much more easily. Like this is definitely a step in that direction, which we like. So last thing comparison wise, like comparing apples and oranges here, but uh, obviously the milling on this gun is very, uh, very, very cool. Um, they cut a lot off this thing. It's not super light, but I'll tell you, the milling is just outrageous. It's, it's just wild. So I'm gonna throw a, throw it side by side here with the twister. We'll take a look. Obviously one of our twister LV1s, this is, 
the only thing they, they private label milled this year. These are just two mean machines right here. Weight wise, I mean, they're fairly similar. Uh, just in my hands, I can't really tell the difference, but just thought you guys would like a little side by side with these. Just cause it's kind of cool. All right, guys, let's get to the fun stuff and do a little bit of shooting, okay? All right. Hey, guys, T2. T News from PB Nation. And uh, we are doing a little bit of a shooting video and a little shoot around with some different guns here. So, the showcase gun, we have the GSL, the Planet Eclipse. We will be testing that for efficiency. We are also going to be doing a little bit of shooting with Reaper G03 and a side-by-side -side with the Twister as well, comparing all three guns in a couple of different, um, couple of different categories. So, uh, all the guns we've already photographed, uh, they're all shooting consistently about 285 feet per second to 280 feet per second. 280 is the field limit here at Boston Paintball, so um, that's pretty much why we set it at that benchmark. We also have, what do we got, 14 pots of paint over here? 15 pots of paint. So it's just about a full case of paint of, uh, of our field grade Evil. Just fresh out of the case, we just cracked it, we just put it in there. Um, PSI running out of the Ninja Tank on the GSL is? 550. 550. Uh, these guns are not going to be used, the other two, for uh, any sort of efficiency numbers. We're really going to be doing more of a comparison for uh, sound uh, for decibel levels. So uh, let's get right to the good stuff, okay? Come well, on. What's up, guys? This is Tina's from PB Nation. You guys might have seen my post uh, talk about efficiency numbers with the new GSL. But um, I know there's a lot of people squawking and hemming and hollering about uh, needing a shooting video. So here it is. Got my Ninja Pro aired up to about 4,500. That'll focus in. All right. Currently running on one shim, output pressure of 550. Um, I'll go ahead and get you a, a readout on that with my digi gauge once I get back to the staging area. But um, just wanted to try to see how much paint I could shoot for you guys today. Gun is set, capped 12.3, just for NEXL league rules here in New England. I'm using a die rotor, my loader, just for you guys for chrono purposes. 290, 279. There's your average 282, average 277, average 279, average 279. So again, the field limit here at BP is 280. So we're just gonna rail on this gun, try to shoot as much paint as possible. Yeah. Again, we're shooting Boston Paintballs Field Paint, Ultra Evil, or Field Grade Evil. Gives me a decent paint to bore match. 6869. Don't want to jinx it yet, but no barrel breaks. It's shooting great. That's four pods right now, sitting at just about 2,500 PSI left in the tank. That's my fifth pod, loading up number six. Sitting at, looks like close to 2200. Here's number six, here's number seven. Looks like I'm sitting right around 1800 for those viewers at home. Just under 2K left in the tank. 
Starting to frost up just a little because it's getting cold. Here comes pod number eight. That's eight pods, 140 round tubes. Pod number nine. Sitting at right around 1500. Double digits up to pod number 10. Those kids in the backfield playing splat masters sound like they're having a lot of fun. Pod number 11. Reg's starting to really frost up, looking up about 700 PSI. Here's pod number I put that at close to 11, say 11 and a half pods off that 68.45. I just dumped it. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I just want to get all the pods on the table. It's hilarious. <laughs> but not bad for a spool valve marker. Hey guys, uh, the next test we're going to do with these guns, we've got uh, Twister LV1, we have a Committed Paintball Reaper GO3, and we have the GSL. So the next thing we're going to do is a decibel meter test to see who gives off the least amount of sound signature for each shot. So first thing we're going to start with is the twister. So this is a Boston Paintball committed and committed paintball twister uh, LV1. This is loaded up with a chainsaw package which is just a very very fast semi-automatic um, mode. Uh, really no tweaks at all to anything else in the gun in terms of air efficiency. Uh, so this is pretty much right out of the box. Again, all the guns we uh, are testing today are all chronoing with an average of about 280 to 285 feet per second, which is the speed limit here at Boston Paintball. So here we're going to see the max. So 84.4 is the decibel reading for the Twister LV1. Next up, we have the Meta Mayhem GO3 by Committed Paintball. Uh, this is loaded up with what we call the bloodbath settings. Uh, just a modified mode uh, for efficiency settings and um, PSP settings for our team bloodline. So nothing really too fancy in this one, but it is tuned and refined. So let's give it a look. So 
So 79.5 is what we're getting off this one. And last but not least, we have Planet Eclipse GSL. Uh, this is a pre-production model um, provided to us by T-Niz on PB Nation, Tom. Uh, and we're gonna give this one a go. So here we go. So 74.2 is the reading for this one. Come on over. All right, guys. So we are going to do a little shootout now uh, between all three guns, um, just to kind of get you an idea of uh, sound signature, you know, feel of the gun, and just when you shoot them side by side intermittently, you get kind of that that sense of how the gun actually flows a little bit. So uh, GSL Twister LV1. Just going to do three shots with each gun, alternating back and forth, just so you can kind of get the, the feel for each. GSL, Twister LV1, I'll top off here. I'm actually going to switch over to the Meta Mayhem GO3. I'm going to stick with the GSL. I don't blame you. <laughs> Three rounds. all three guns latest production minus the 3.1 because they're still new on the shelves and uh, don't want to tick off big ant too bad here at Boston paintball paint shot great though no the breaks in the pod uh, yeah all right so we're just gonna have a little funsies now so Twister LV1 versus GSL we're gonna totally top off our rotors we're both shooting identical setups pretty much he has a Ninja, Ninja tank, outputting 550. I've got my Ninja, it's outputting standard, about 750, 800. Uh, both shooting rotors with um, nothing fancy in them. Uh, fresh batteries in both. And both chrono in at the same. We're gonna shoot a hopper. And a pod. I'm just gonna top off our hoppers equally, as I empty out half a month. Hey, what are you talking about? That's full. <laughs> All right, hopper and a pod drag race. Ready. Go. T2 is buying the beaters tonight! Yeah! This guy's fast. <laughs> 